do the brakes on your Farmall tractor no longer work correctly, the brakes on the Farmall H behind me are completely gone. So today, we'll walk you through that process step by step. We'll replace all the brake components as well as the brake seal. Now these techniques will only apply to a Farmall H, M, W4, or W6. If you work on a Super H or a Super M, those have disc style brakes, so they're completely different than the band style brakes that you'll see on this tractor. Now to start things off, we did remove the wheel and you'll need to do the same. Please be careful when you remove the wheel and get a friend to help you. If your tractor does have wheel weights on it, consider taking the wheel weights off first and then removing the wheel. You'll have better balance of the weight and less chance of it getting away from you. You'll notice that we do have my fender removed. We removed that just so that you can easily see what's going on, but you would be able to leave the fender on your tractor while you make this repair. So the first thing that we want to do is remove this spring from the outside here. And this will just um, pull off like that and then it will uh, reach off the the back, there we go. And then the next thing we wanna do is remove this cotter key and take the pin out. This will drop down. And then we need to loosen this up. I think this is gonna be really tight. So we'll loosen this so that we can get this lever off of the component here. Removing the nut off of the bottom of here. And then this bolt will come out like that. And then this lever will come off. Usually they're really tight. Sometimes you might have to go to extreme lengths to heat that up or uh, use a wedge in there or we might pull off like that. Next, we want to take these bolts off of the cover. I do have some of them removed already so that we can pull this off quickly here. There's one down there. There's another one right here. Got it pretty loose. One word about my jacks. I want you to notice that I do have uh, two jack stands so that it's doubly secure. And I also have chocks on the wheels on the other side of the tractor. When you have one wheel off of the tractor, you don't want to have to be worried about it getting away. Got one bolt back here that's left. Also on my brakes, I have my brakes locked so that this lever down here is out of the way so that this cover can pull off. You'll want to do the same. If you just lock them, it'll put this lever in a better position so that you can get the cover off. Just a little bit more on this bolt back here, and then we'll be ready to pull that off loose there. Now this will wiggle right out of there. There we go. When you're at this point in your repair, you'll want to do some inspection. Take a look at this drum and see if it's greasy at all. If it is greasy, that's an indication that you definitely need to replace your seal. However, if it's dry like mine, then you may not necessarily have to replace your seal. However, if you're this far into the repair, you might want to do that anyways. So I'll show you how to replace the seal. If your uh, drum is extremely dusty, then you definitely want to put a dust, a dust mask on to protect your lungs, or you could spray it with brake cleaner. Remove this bolt here, and then this washer will come out with it. Then I'm going to put the bolt back in so that when we use the gear puller to uh, pull the drum off, it will protect the threads from the gear puller. So I have my bolt back in, and then I'm going to tighten this up, and the gear puller will help pull the drum right off of the tractor. I'm ready to pull the drum off now, the rest of the way. I'm gonna, just gonna set my gear puller down, then it will pull right off like that and then our seal is exposed. At this point, you want to replace the seal. There's a couple different options for removing the seal. One would be like we did on this seal where we just used a, a chisel and a hammer and drove it out. It was really, really difficult. So we're gonna show you another way to do it. And that would be to drill uh, two holes that are opposite of each other into the seal and then insert some screws that you can use to then pull the seal out. Additionally, if you have a seal puller, a specific tool for that task, then definitely use it. But these are some other options for people that wouldn't have that kind of specialized tool. I'm gonna put the screw in the hole that I already made. 
and then we'll be able to pull on these screws to pull the seal out. Now with both la lacking pliers and both of the screws, <laughs> you can pull the seal out just like that and uh, then we'll replace the seal. Of course, since we're replacing the seal, it doesn't matter that we wrecked the seal by drilling into it because we're just gonna put a brand new one on. I put some sealer on the outside ring of my new seal so that it will seal really well in there. And you want to pound it in just so that it's flush right here. The seal will go in farther, but you don't want it to go in farther. So just gently tap it in there. Use anything in your shop that's the right diameter so that, uh, oops, looks like I need to go a little bit on the bottom here. Here we go. So you can see how flush it is up here. That's good. Cleaning out the center of my drum just so that it will easily slide onto the brake shaft here. I'm gonna pick it up and there's a key in here. We left the key in there completely and you'll want to do the same. And then we'll set it on there. Just gonna, I'm gonna get in front of it here so I can see that I'm getting the key on there straight. There we go. And then we'll drive it in. I'm driving the drum on the rest of the way and then we'll put our washer along with the bolt back in. I'm gonna get it started and then we'll tighten it up with the impact. If there's a little bit more that the drum needs to go in then the bolt should tighten it up, but it looks really close from what I can tell. We'll tighten that up. You can see that I have my band out of the cover. There is a half moon key that you want to pay attention to when you're removing this from the cover. And then once you have it out, you can take the band off of the linkage. Now these pins will uh, remove, they only come out in a certain direction. So we'll take those off. Pay attention to which way you take it off because you'll want to put your new band on in the same manner. If you wreck these, when you take them out, you can buy a new one, or if they're uh, reusable, then you can definitely reuse them. So now our linkage will come off and we'll clean this up. We'll use a wire brush and get it really clean before we put our new band on. At this point, we're ready to put our new band on. You'll notice that the material is a little bit different. It's just an updated style that doesn't have asbestos in it. So it's okay that it looks a little bit different. We'll drive this pin through all the way. A little bit more. There we go. Okay. Now we'll put the new or the next band on up here. Again, we're putting this in in the exact same direction that we uh, took the other band off. I took a picture before I took the other one off so I would remember to put it back in the right way and you might want to do that too. So then we'll push this through. Trying to get it lined up. We did need to use a file inside these holes on the new band just to sh uh, clean that up. There was a little bit of paint in there. You might need to do the same. There we go. So both of our pins are through. Now we're ready to assemble it. Here you can see that my band is fit into my cover. We used a pair of locking pliers on the end of this uh, linkage here to twist it around to drop the band in and then released it and the band expanded to match the shape of the cover. So now that that's done, we're ready to put it onto the tractor all as one assembly. So we'll drop this in here and get it lined up. I think I'm caught on something down there we go just like that and I'll use a rubber hammer to tap it in the rest of the way I'm tightening up my last bolt on the cover here we got all the other ones tight as well now on this linkage up here we put the rubber seal in the back and also the half moon key you want to do the same and you can uh, just pound that half moon key in so it's really tight and so that this lever will go on. Do you see how it slides over there really easily? And then we'll put this bolt in. Next, we'll wanna release the brake. Remember, we set the brake to hold it in place. We wanna release that so we can uh, work with these other levers. At this point, we're gonna put this new spring on. You can see that it rests in a groove there. And again, that's a replacement part. 
Here you can see we have the adjustment done. We move these threads out in, so that it will fit in between the two points with the, and then we secured it with the cotter keys. But what we want to accomplish with this adjustment right here is that there's an inch and a half of give on the pedal. And you can adjust that just by moving this bolt in and out. If you need a new one of these, you can purchase a new uh, replacement part for this as well or you can use the same one. I'll show you the play for the pedal. You want to have an inch and a half when you press the pedal all the way down between the uh, bottom of the pedal and the floorboard. Inch and a half of play there. If it's different on your tractor, you can adjust it with that uh, adjustment spring there. You can see that our wheel and our fender are back on the tractor. You can follow those same exact steps to do the brake job to the other side of your tractor and then your brake job will be complete. I'm going to start the tractor up. I'll drive forward so you can see how the brakes work now. We have a quick response from the brakes. That's how your brakes should work too. I hope that this video is helpful to you when you make the repair on your own tractor. We do have plenty of other videos to watch on several makes and models of tractors on steinertractor.tv.